Sudden Fall here with a guide for Gogo Naketsu Slip and Slide Madness. So I wanted to show you how to get a goal at the tougher ones. You gotta force it in like this. By just keep hammering A on them. And that's how you get tougher goals. So we, first off we want to hit play. And then you want to hit the burger button. So you can go into your settings, your, display, your sound settings. And uh, turn the volume down. Because in my opinion the volume is quite loud in this one and we have a lot of matches to play. So then we want to hit the um, Y button and then hit B and then type in 4728. That is 4728. This will give us the dodgeball team. You hit B again and then push B to skip the cutscene. Hit B to select all your teammates. I just hammer B there. And then the first objective is to get your goal. Once you've got your goal it's quite simple from there. See, we just slip it in like that because we're on the easier matches at the moment, it's possible to do that. Now the second objective, now that we've got our goal, is basically just to run out the clock. So the few ways you can do that is you can run around like this, around your goal post, and at the bottom parts of the stage. The challenge with running around your goalpost is that you'll have three people on you instead of just two because the goalie also, if you're too close, can knock you. Um, if you go over to the other goalpost area and you run around that one, you will have one person chase you, but the, um, the goalpost is your own, so you can put the puck into your goalpost, which is not handy at all. As you can see here, I got knocked out, so I changed to the AI that was closest to the puck, but he has now got the puck, and they're going for a goal. So I control the goalie with the left stick, while also controlling that AI that had an arrow on it. You can push A to grab the puck instead of just blocking it with his body. I found that challenging because I'm also trying to watch where I am controlling while well, controlling the other character, so I would generally just move the left stick to have the goalie get hit by the puck rather than actively try to grab the puck. There are a few instances where you will see me when I fast forward it, grab the puck. Um, it is, it, it, in those situations you have to then um, guide the AI as well as the goalie, and it's very confusing, into close proximity so when you fire it with A, you will give it to yourself and not the other team. You can play two players, and the second controller could tr control the um, goalie, but again, to me that's useless because then you'd have to pick up the second controller and you'd leave yourself open with the um, AI basically on your team being useless. You're unable to protect yourself. So it's sort of one of those things you've got to put up with. This is the other way you can do it. As you can see, you can run around your own goal. The goalie won't try and take it because it's your own goalie. As he only tries to take it if the other team have it. Uh, the problem is if you get too close to your own goal, you can put the puck in, which I did a couple of times, unfortunately. But this is why we abuse the save load system. So the best time to save is when they're actually um, quite a ways away from you and you've got some breathing room. See, right now he's close. I wouldn't recommend saving it. But then when I run, up, run off here, you'll see him turn around. And that's when I would save it. And that's how you can eat up the time. And once the time is up, it'll go to the next match. And basically we rinse and repeat this for every match except for the last match, of course. Um, there is another match where it is slightly different and there is a glitch that I can show in the next match, but I wouldn't recommend attempting or trying to get the glitch. It's more of a situational kind of thing that if you pay attention while you're playing and you notice, you will be able to take advantage of. So again, save after every quarter. So that way you've got a backup save. Keep that save and don't touch it, and then save in a separate slot. Um, while you're eating up the time, so that way if you make a bad save, hopefully with my advice you won't, but if you do make a bad save, you will be able to load it and not lose much progress. Just a couple of minutes of time, unfortunately, but there's not much we can do about that. So I will mention, since that we're doing the running around, to 
um, fight them, you basically got to hit B. Be careful because if you get um, angry and you hit them, you can get penalized and be put in a penalty box, leaving you with only two team members until the next round or until they've scored a goal. And obviously, we don't want them to score a goal. You only really need to use B to get your puck back. Um, you don't really need to do it to fight them. During the interval, there will be a slight cutscene. You can skip with B or Y, I think it is. And then you can hit B again to put your team into place and start the match. You can also charge up your puck uh, at goal attack with holding in A. Though it's situational where if the AI is too close, it's not worth it. It's good to stun the goalie, but it's one of those kind of things where you've got to really um, calculate if it's doable or not. Otherwise it's just easier to hammer A while you keep picking up the puck to try and get it through that way in the later ones. So I won't be speaking much um, during this speed up process because this is just basically to show you during the matches um, how to do it and everything, waste time. But I wanted to talk to explain a few things and a few of the controls and stuff because it is a bit tricky. So when the match is over, you can skip the cutscenes with B and then hammer B and we can start the next match. So this match is the baseball team and the first thing you always want to focus on when you're in a new match is definitely the um, goal. As soon as you get your first goal, then you're, then you're set for the rest of the game. And you make a save and then make a backup save and then just waste time until the match is over. There's no need to try and score more than one goal. As long as they don't score a goal, which with save loading, you'll be able to make sure they don't score a goal, you're all good. So this is uh, the baseball team. And the baseball team, I found, was really easy to get stuck. Their AI um, are, don't seem to be as aggressive as the other AI. There's two types of stock that the AI can get. Unfortunately, with this team, I could only show you the one at our goal. So basically, what will happen occasionally is the AI, as you can see, he moved down but, and got locked in place with my AI. Again, I only noticed this because I had stopped and they couldn't get to me. So that's why I said it's a situational kind of glitch. If it happens, you've more or less got to be aware that suddenly they're not moving. There's instances, if you pay attention, where I didn't notice um, they got stuck and I would continue on and then get them unstuck. Luckily I noticed so I'm able to just sit here and waste time. But there's another one on the other side which is even more situational. Occasionally, because the AI doesn't know whether to go left or right, they will get stuck on the goal and you can just sit there and waste the time. I was able to get that in the last quarter of the last game and waste all that time, which was sweet because I didn't have to move. But otherwise, it's not something I would aim for. It's just something if you see and notice, you can take advantage of. It's just easier to run around and save load more than try and get a glitch that's tricky and situational to based on what the AI do to happen. I try and attempt it here again and I'm pretty sure I managed to achieve it but as you can see I got it when there was like not much time left on the clock so again I wouldn't say it was worth it. But if you want to attempt it while you're running around and it happens, bonus because then you can sit there and have a drink or whatever. <laughs>
So now you'll be versing the girl team. Now the girl team has still got an easy goalie, don't get me wrong, but you will notice an increase in the aggression. The girls themselves are very aggressive and it can be a very tough challenge, but this is this is only a small increase on the aggression factor. Uh, further in they get way more aggressive than this. But I thought I would still mention it so that you can see for yourself while you're playing how the aggression factor works. I wanted to keep a video of them scoring a goal to show you how easy it is for the other team to score a goal and this is why we rely on save loading. So while we're waiting for the timer just to be eaten up for the girls, I thought I'd talk about the last match. So the last match, the achievement that we have to go for is putting the captain into the penalty box three times during the match, while also making sure that they don't score a goal. So you should be able to score three or two-ish goals, depending on how much time is left when you get them in the penalty box. There's three quarters, so you've got plenty of time to do it. But I do it all in the first quarter because I like to get it over with. Um, but even then, that was challenging. Uh, so basically, the B-bash button that we use to get the puck back is the button we'll be using to aggravate him in the hopes that when he hits us the referee sees it and I will teach you about aggression further in um, because at the moment we won't see it. The other challenge is not scoring a goal so that can be very difficult because they have these power-up abilities and they love to use it so I with the, when it comes to the last match I will really recommend having backup saves because sometimes even the uh, person that gets put in the penalty box isn't the captain so it's better to load it and then try and make the captain angry again So now that we beat the girls, the next team we got to verse is the Jocks. The Jocks are, in my opinion, very aggressive. Again, they're not as aggressive as some of the teams, but their moves are very dangerous, they're very strong, and they're very aggressive. They would often knock me and bump me. So with the goal, as you can see, I managed to score it in, but generally the idea is to push it in like I showed you. This is where this uh, factor starts to come into it, and this is where it really becomes about getting the puck, wasting the time, because the aggression factor is starting to get ramped up, and the toughness of the goalies themselves is starting to get uh, tough.
So this is where I first noticed the glitch happens on the other goalpost, and as you can see it's definitely situational. He gets stuck into a point where he's not sure to go left or right basically, and because of where I'm positioned, it pins him into location. Again, it's not useful, it's just something if you happen to notice while you're playing, I say take advantage of. Next team, the one that we're about to deal with. Um, these guys have a unique, uh, what would you call it, match aspect. They added lightning into this part of the match, and you will see it straight away when I go for a goal. <laughs> Bam, took me out so I couldn't get the goal. So push B basically, and if you notice that was knocking them away from me, so then the lightning struck the third guy. I had time to charge up with A because again that's a situational thing, and then I was hammering A to push the goal in. He sent the goal to the guy above me, which means I was able to intercept it and throw it in, and thus score my goal. Hence why I said the bashing of A is basically the best way to try and get a goal in, but again it's a situational kind of thing where you have to save it before you go for it. This uh, team in particular, for some reason, will often throw the goal over the goalpost to try and strike it in. So you got to be very aware and careful of that. Don't try and chase them behind their goalpost if they have it. If they run behind your goalpost, most of the time it's better to be in front of your goalie trying to intercept. But once you get a hold of the puck, then you want to run out of the time, again being careful of the lightning, but I found if I was at the bottom running around in circles, it generally wouldn't happen. Also, they get stuck, because I was saving it when this happened, I noticed. And right here, I was able to basically eat up the time not doing anything, thankfully. So, try and pay attention to what's happening in your game, because you might be saving it, and you might be saving it in a really good time.
So right here, I wanted to show you a little interesting fact about this game. If you score a goal within the second, zero second mark or the one second mark, it actually adds three seconds to the timer, which I thought was quite an interesting little fact that I thought I'd just show. I just had to force the goal in at the right time. As always, make a save just before the start of a match, and then go for your goal. Once you get the goal, make another save. I will 
say this to boost your confidence uh, because I don't show when I'm failing, but this goal in particular against the army, it took me four minutes of loading and failing just to get the goal. So don't give up. You can do it. <laughs> it just requires a lot of luck, some good timing, and then you'll have your goal and you can continue to run out the clock. This is probably my favourite interval cutscene because we get to see the Zamboni. But because I'm making a guide, I of course skip it, but I still watch it a little bit because Zambonis are cool. So now we're up to the next team, which is the purple team, and in my opinion, I think these ones are the most aggressive. It actually is quite difficult to get a goal, but it gets to show off, but my goal in particular that I do get on them, it gets to show off a few things. And the reason why I don't go for power shots, and I try and just force it in. So right here, they managed to get the puck away from me, and then I power shot it, and see, he caught the power shot. Right here, I went to put it in, and he caught it, so I'm hitting A, and it switched me to a character that had the puck. I knocked into my other character, and while ramming him, was able to get him blocked with the other AI, because it was a situational thing where the AI was in the way. And this is why I said with the goals, trying to force it in is your best bet, because then the AI that's on your team can be used as sort of a buffer, or if you get lucky, you can buffer the goalie for a few seconds and force it in.
And here it is, we're up to the last team. And as you can see, the captain has a slight um, fringe, and that's the only way you can tell it's the captain, unfortunately. So our goal here is to basically hit B onto the captain, while also trying to keep the puck away from the um, non-captains and also the captain. As you can see here, I got the puck and I'm trying to move my guys into place. You don't want to necessarily keep the puck in your area, but it is more advantageous to have the puck in your area. I, I, I sort of uh, had a strategy of keeping the puck more behind their goal. It seemed to be the best area, but if you can try and swing two or three hits on him, as you can see my guy for example is now aggressive, and so is the captain. So the captain just punched my guy, the referee called it, and gets put into the penalty box. This is exactly what you want. Sometimes it will happen where he'll punch the guy or he'll hit the guy and the referee doesn't call it. So it's one of those kind of situations where if you notice that you might have to load. So now what the objective is is to get the puck from the them without getting put in the penalty box myself, which almost happened because that guy was aggressive, um, and then score ourselves a goal. We want to try and do this as quickly and efficiently as possible so that way we can... Um, so that way we can get the captain back. Because as you can see I failed there. And I deliberately show failing. So that way I can show you the successful one. And the successful one is me pushing it in. I saved it so that way I wouldn't waste any time setting back up. So that way I could go straight into getting the captain aggressive again. So again, the objective is to keep the puck away from the people while trying to also aggravate the captain and the hard part is you've got to keep an eye on where the captain is and which one is the captain. Again, the fringe is all you've got to go on. So I'm trying to whack him. If you can manage to whack him more than once, it is more likely, but as you can see I just got punched. And it shows you at the top the guy with the fringe, but on the box if you notice there's no fringe. So I'm 100% certain he's not the captain. So right here, I thought about making a backup save, but I'm 100% certain it's not the captain. So first, I wait for this anger to wear off, and as you can see, once the anger wears off, I can clearly see that's the captain there. So from there, I can load my game before I aggravated them, and then re-aggravate the captain. 
and this is basically the strategy you'll be doing for this match. Like I said, there's two positions depending on what you prefer. I have one where it's putting the goal behind the goalpost, and the other where it's putting it basically behind your goalpost. Because the AI love to do power shots, as you can see he was attempting one there to try and put it in their goal. And it can be quite tricky to stop them from scoring a goal while also aggravating the captain. The captain also doesn't stay aggravated for long because as you can see there, I had him aggravated but he's now unaggravated. So it's one of those sort of situations where even if you get him aggro, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to stay aggro. It can take a while to get the aggro situation as well, because you've got to try and pay attention to goals while also whacking him about. Once you notice he's aggro, which I have, as you can see I'm getting in his way, and this is the situation where I was talking about where he should have been penalised but wasn't, so the best thing to do because you wasted all that time to get him aggro and then he punched, isn't to continue, it's actually to load. The reason I would suggest this is because then you've got a whole minute back to try and get him aggro again, because the, the more um, time you don't waste getting him aggro and the more time um, spent is the less time you have. Don't ask me how I was able to stop that, but I was. <laughs> sometimes you'll get lucky and be able to stop the power shot goals, and sometimes they're just instant goals for them, and you'll have to load. See right here, I'm guarding the puck. So that way I can aggravate the captain. I noticed he was aggro. So I'm moving the puck over to the other side of the field, hoping that he stays aggro by the time we get to the other side of the field. And unfortunately, as you can see, it's worn off by the time he's at the other side of the field. So again, I'm guarding the puck. Here we go, he's aggro. And he got penalised. So that's why it was worth loading it, because I got that within the minute that I wasted trying to get that previously. So now that's two times he's been aggroed, and they haven't scored a goal. And now I have the one minute and eight seconds to try and score a goal myself. As you can see I'm holding A, but I've got to try and time it, and I can catch it. That one is one you can catch, but it's tricky. I was tempted to just load, as you saw when I popped up the menu, but I figured I'd risk trying to catch it to show you guys, and I was able to. So I'm saving it before I try to score my goal, and then I'm forcing it in like I showed you how. And I was able to score a second goal. You don't necessarily need to score a second goal. The main reason I'm doing the goals is to bring him back ASAP because as soon as you score a goal he's out of the penalty box. So this gives me 40 seconds to try and get a aggro captain and to get penalized. Now of course I wouldn't really recommend using that 40 seconds to do that. I'd recommend going to a next quarter but me myself I wanted to get this over with so I focused on trying to do this within the first quarter so that way I could just run around and not have to worry. And as you can see, he's aggro here and penalized. I managed to do it. I was quite happy and proud of myself for managing to do it. So that is the achievement now set because he's been penalized three times. And we've got goals and they've got no goals. So the only thing we have to do, though I do attempt within the 15 seconds to manage a goal, but I'm unsuccessful. <laughs> That's why I said you could score two to three goals. Um, but the only thing we have to do now is uh, waste our time. The achievement's in the bag for us. I hope you have a easier time to get him penalised, but now we get to enjoy just watching 
uh, me waste time and fight them because they are very, very aggressive. They will constantly get the goal, so I would recommend, as you notice, when I have the puck and there's no one near me, I will often save it. See how he caught me at my own goal? He's turned around, so I've saved it. This is what I, I was talking about at the start of this guide. All this uh, running around has built up to this situation. And as long as they don't score a goal, you have met the requirements, so congratulations. Hopefully um, you weren't silly like me and tried to do it in one quarter. Like I said, I'd re recommend at least doing it in two quarters. You know, get two in one and then one in the next. If you need all three quarters, you need all three quarters. But either way, hopefully you'll be able to manage it. It is tough to bash them with B while also keeping an eye on where the puck is and where the other two are. While also letting yourself get hit so that you get him penalized by the referee. But I'm sure you can do it. So we're on the uh, third quarter now. Just wasting the time. And as you can see here, I noticed he got stuck. So I was able to finish the last 50 seconds without having to actually run around or escape them, which is nice. So now we've got the achievement for a hockey club dominator, which is getting him kicked out three times and defeating them without them scoring a goal. So congrats. You'll also get the achievement soon. Once the cutscene plays a little bit. There we go. Hockey champ. This is for clearing story mode. And then... The one we worked hard for. Dodgeball Club plays hockey too. Clearing sto story mode, so the entire story mode, with the Dodgeball Club. Congratulations on getting all three. And nice work. So now what you want to do is hit the guide button, or the burger button, as I like to call it. And you want to go into the control manual. I push it at first because I didn't know this. I just push it right on the D-pad. Um, but you can actually hold it to get to the end. And the achievement will pop. So that's a little nice tidbit for you. If I show that in the later videos. But not in the first one that I did. So once you get that. You want to push B. And go into settings. And then go into display settings. And then go into scan lines. You want to push right on the d-pad to change it to smooth and then push B to back out. This will actually save the change and you'll get CRT screen for adjusting the scan lines. Then you want to push B to go back again and you want to go into sound settings. You want to go over to reverb and turn that on and then push B. This will get you reverberation of retro sound for turning on reverb in sound options. Then we want to return to the top menu. We want to go into the settings here, individual settings, and then you want to pick an avatar. I'll just go with the one that's on the left, and this will get you transform. Then we want to go edit background. Now this is the interesting one with edit background. So you have to scroll over with the right on the d-pad and push A to accept the change, not B. You have to hit A with the first one as well, the avatar, but the background ones. So we want to go on to online play, and then we want to go to create a room, 
Now you don't have to change the settings like I do, but I do anyway. You just want to set it to only friends and create a room. You'll see the avatar change to it as well, which is kind of cool. That's the whole point of it. And you'll get show us what you got for creating your own private match. So now the last achievement we have is completion for unlocking all achievements. This one actually only pops when you quit the game and then relaunch it. Once you relaunch the game, it'll ask you to um, who were you playing as. I cut that out just so it sped up, but that'll get you the completion achievement and your 1000G. Congratulations on completing the game.